one us one any unit in district two zone two having a chainsaw and some availability to help out one of our own police. Declaring my 38, I'll be on a 1019 to ACF. 214642, priority 3. Code 2 for a 1055 no contact, well-being check on one of our own. Code location, could I have a unit 1025 with me for a code 2, bring in some water. Hi, I'm Chris at U.S. Preparatory. Today we're going to install a standard radio for the PEG radio system. I'm going to show you how to do an installation, and this particular installation is actually going to have the HL1 remote head kit. Let's get started. Well, this particular installation, since we're doing a remote head kit, this kit, this radio is actually going underneath the seat, which is really simple. Actually, it's one of the easier installs. It's actually easier than putting in a bracket. So, um... It's just a matter of the rough side of Velcro being mounted on the back of the transceiver. Pop the seat up, you don't even have to take it out, and um, run the wires. Guys, one of the tips I always use uh, or tell people to easily get through the firewall is you're going to find that there's many grommets in the firewall already. Right here is a good example of one. Taking a standard screwdriver or even a Phillips head screwdriver and just pushing through it will get you inside the car and if we go in we can take a look to see where it came out okay, you can see here the screwdriver is located right here came in from the outside very easy to get through it has two uh, benefits of using this method as opposed to drilling through one it um, is self-sealing from any elements and two it's um, it doesn't have any burrs that you have to worry about digging into the uh, into the wire. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull our power wire out. We're going to actually go out because I already have a pre-made power wire set up. So what we did here was uh, the screwdriver wasn't quite long enough, so I had removed that screwdriver. It already had made the hole in the grommet, and I uh, pushed a, uh, a fish snake through there very easily, taped on the wire. And now it's time to pull it through. Okay. Okay, so what we're going to do is you'll find that on every vehicle there is some type of wire loom. We're going to uh, just simply zip tie it to this wire loom. We're going to work our way over to the battery and uh, just connect it up. And that'll be the supplying the power for the radio. Well, we ran our power wire from inside along the... Um, the wire loom, the existing wire harness, factory harness, pretty much blends in. It's covered with uh, black electrical tape just to make it blend in. We're going to put on the fuse, make sure you remove the fuse. And we're just going to um, strip this and prepare this, and then we'll waterproof it later. Be very careful when you put these on, not to let anything touch, not to let the metal tools touch anything, anything grounded of the vehicle. If you have to, you can cut this, uh, notch this boot out, but I don't think that's going to be necessary for this installation. And then we'll tie this down here and insert the fuse and we should be ready to go. All right, the installation's done. Fuse holder is here. The wires are going to be running right up against the wire loom. And right down here into the ground. Very simple installation. So far we have about 45 minutes into this install. That's the easiest way you're going to find to run a wire out of the firewall and the best place to connect a two-way radio especially a two-way radio is directly to the battery uh, due to the um, the filtering capabilities of the battery cigarette lighter plugs and internal things tend to be a very noisy source especially on a high power transmitter so we only tend to run a single wire out to the uh, battery and the grounding is done inside you can see that since this was uh, previously installed in a vehicle it has a grounding lug loop on it already 
I'm going to show you in here where we're going to do that. Then we're just going to run that in. And since this particular installation, as I mentioned, is a remote head kit mount, we're going to be run, uh, mounting the radio actually underneath the um, passenger seat. All right. Okay, the grounding lug that's common with almost every vehicle, you're going to find something in this pillar over here, in this right side, this kick panel. And this is a 10, 10 millimeter uh, master grounding bus. These are these bolts are everywhere in most um, most vehicles nowadays. So you'll find an easy place to ground it inside, and then we're just going to run the uh, wiring through the existing cheese, and then right underneath the passenger seat. <laughs> There we go. Just ran the um, ran the power cables down underneath the carpet. There's an existing wiring harness that goes in there. Very simple stuff. And now we have uh, power from the battery and a well-grounded source right underneath the um, the seat. Now, as I mentioned, this is a remote head kit mount. This is the remote head. The um, member actually um, asked me to mount this with Velcro, so it's going to be mounted over there in the center console. The cable is going to connect the transceiver, which is going to be mounted under the seat with the necessary connections. And this cable will run from here over to the center console. And other than that is the antenna cable that we had run from the roof is right here. We're just going to do the same thing. We're going to run this underneath the carpet right out through here and it'll get plugged into the rear antenna connection of the radio. So that's next. First thing I guess we can do is the antenna. Now, if you get extra coax cable coming from your antenna, do not coil it up into a tight coil. Just lay it flat randomly, and I uh, maybe underneath the carpet or in a place where there's little foot traffic. If you coil it, you could have other problems with uh, matching the antenna later. Uh, we're gonna power up or plug the power into the radio. And we're going to lay this, this is the hard part of Velcro, the stiff part. We're going to lay this on the carpet, which grabs really, really well. Now, if there's any flow vents like there is in this, make sure the radio isn't covering them. I'm going to plop that right about there. And that's not going anywhere. Right along here. up underneath this edge of the center console. Right along the edge here. Now that's something that you're not going to see. The seat will be covering that. I'm going to run that all the way around the perimeter and like that. Okay, let's see if we uh, connect this up. There we go. Perfect. The other step that I'm not going to show in this because it's um, it really does deserve its own video is the tuning of the antenna with an SWR meter. So we'll get to that later in a different video. But for now, we're just going to sew the rest of this job up, and uh, I'll show you the end results. We're just going to rub a little. Um, going to prepare this both surfaces with a little denatured alcohol. Isopropyl rubbing alcohol should do the trick as well. Gonna mount it right here on the top. Just make sure we take any dirt or oil off of it. Stuff dries pretty quick. Now, I recommend using a couple of um, either self-tapping screws or some kind of screw, small half-inch screws or even a quarter-inch screw. Um, it would give it a little bit better bite, and you wouldn't have to worry about heat ruining the uh, ruining the, the adhesion on the Velcro. Um, but this is what was requested, so that's what I'm going to do. One S one radio check five four three two one. One S one radio check five four three two one. From the driver's perspective, you can see the radio is easily in reach. Microphone is just off to the right. This again is a remote head kit mount and their transceiver is underneath the passenger seat. 
but this is basically all it takes to do an install in your vehicle for the PEG radio system uh, using a motor roller, a radius, or MaxTrack.